So I'm going to be doing a lot of, uh, unfortunately, talking on this one because you already have the base knowledge to do all this stuff, which is splining. Um, and if you did your first two holes, uh, based on my suggestion, you should know how to do various different shapes and have some ideas there on your approach. And now that you went all the way through, you know how those impact things in Unity, you know how Blender works. So now I'm just going to give you an approach to splining the rest of your course. So first of all, use your existing Inkscape file that you've already done. Those two holes, use it, okay? The, the, you successfully sent them through Clender. You've got good shapes. You're going to build off of that. Moving forward, I want you to th keep things organized. Now, the professional guys that build tons of these courses, they're dropping one or two a week. They just spline and they move stuff around in that hierarchy. They don't really make mistakes and they're quick. But you guys, you're going to have to really think about how you're doing this at first, and you'll get better at it. But keep things organized. I tend to do it by hole. In some courses, depending how they're laid out, I've done by area, two or three holes at a time or a section of the course. Sometimes I do by type, and actually I mix some of these together. And you'll see I do by hole and I do by type. So that's when those folders and those layers that you build, I do those by hole, by area, by type. I mix them all together. Bottom line is you don't have to follow my approach. Do whatever makes sense to you. All right. So my suggestion would be those start with the smaller top shapes the t's the bunkers and the greens go through your whole course and do your t's your bunkers and your greens make sure to periodically send them through clender make sure they're cutting correctly and make sure you're getting a mesh file out of that the reason i like to do that is because since they're small and when you create those then you can still see your satellite underlay underneath there and you don't have to hide them to draw the other shapes that you need to do for example, if you started drawing all your fairways first, your fairways are often going to cover up things like your tees, your bunkers, and your and your greens. So now you drew that fairway shape, and now you have to hide it in order to see the other stuff. Okay, so that's why I say draw the smaller stuff first. Next, I say do cart paths because typically they're always on top, right? They don't cover a lot of things. So if you draw them. Um, you can still see the other things around them that you need to draw, and they tend to be problematic, and you want to do them on a whole-by-whole -whole basis and, 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 and kind of make them in smaller batches so they don't cause any problems. Um, and I tend to put them on a, a layer or a folder that's at the very top of my hierarchy, and that way I can turn them on and off really easily, and then I know they're on the top and they're going to cut through everything underneath them. I'll show you this in a second. Um, then as I go, then I'm going to do small ponds and streams that are on the course. Um, and I want to make sure I'm not cutting through them. Again, typically nothing is cutting through a pond or stream. If you have a cart path that does go over a stream or a pond, don't cut through it. Stop the cart path on, on each side of it and give it a little bit of space. You can add bridges, as you know, later on in Blender. Since you've been through that, you know how to add those bridges. You get that in, in Unity, too. Um, and then the very last thing you're going to do is fill in the gaps with rough and deep rough. You can kind of do this as you're going to. So if you spline like a couple holes and your fair and everything on those holes is done, and then you have like the, the open area between where you still see kind of the uh, the satellite, then you can actually fill it back in with the rough and see if it cuts correctly, or you can do it all at the end. Um, I tend to do it as I go and then run it through Clender and make sure it works. But let me show you kind of the progression that I took with TPC Harding Park. So um, looking, so this would have been like the first two holes we did. I, I think we only did one and two, and I think there's some extra stuff in here. I think this rough is a little bit bigger than when we finished. But this was like where we started. And then what I did is I just went through, and you can see that I added all the T's, the greens, the fairways. No, not the fairways, not, not yet. Um, the bunkers and um, some other small stuff like over here in this parking lot I did the landscaping in the parking lot the bottom line is I'm doing all the little tiny stuff that doesn't block anything underneath it okay so you can see looking at this I still have a great view of my satellite um, underlay because of that and um i think i did no i closed it um i sent that through clender and i got my mesh back and i flew around in there and i just made sure i, I had no errors in this time when i did this and everything cut correctly and everything looked really good so what did i do next 
So my progression then was I went and I did my fairways. Okay, my fairways are underneath of my greens in all cases, and not too many of them. If there were some cases here, and you can see what I did is I avoided um, having a fairway cut through a bunker if possible. I'm sorry, a bunker, you never want to cut through a bunker. I avoided uh, bunkers cutting through fairways if possible. So there were some spots here where I went around these bunkers, I went around this bunker. This one, I really couldn't avoid it. I guess I could have gone around here. But the bottom line is I try to avoid cutting through shapes as much as possible. Here you can see I went around those bunkers instead of through them. No one's going to know, okay, other than you that something doesn't look exactly like the course. Like here, I, I took the fairway around this bunker. Um, so that's, you know, that was my approach there. Oh, and I also added there's some areas here where there was some deep rough on the course. So example, if you look at this particular shape right here, I added, there was some deep rough. So I did that. Again, these were small areas as well. And you can see now that I still can see my satellite overlay underneath there. And I, I have a good idea of what's happening. Now, the next thing I did, um, and oh, and also you can see here, cart paths. I did, uh, so this cart path right here is pretty darn big, okay? But it cuts correctly. Guys, I would break them up a little bit smaller than that. All right, that's a pretty darn big cart path. I got lucky that I had no errors on there. Um, so you can see that cart path, I'm turning it on and off. And then you'll see here, and I'll start to uncover these. I added other cart paths as well. They're hidden right now, but I'll show you. There's a cart path, okay? It's, ha it's right over here, in case you're not seeing it blink on and off. Um, so there's a cart path. Let me turn some of these other ones, out so you get an idea how big they're. There's a cart path. That one spans one hole. Uh, up here on 18, this area right here. Um, other cart path right here that spans probably a hole and a half. Blink that on and off. It's another one right here. That's a pretty big one. And it has this area here. I actually uh, sent something through and cut through this here. I must have it hidden right now for some reason. Um, let's see here, some other ones. Uh, this one's down on the south side here, I believe. Oh, no, there's one up here, another car path, it's smaller. It's another car path, that's a pretty big one. And remember, you can't have loops in your car paths, you have to break those up. So there's all my car paths, turn those on for you. Um, oh, then this is the parking lot cart path, which I punched through using that landscaping. Sent this through and it looked fine. Uh, one other thing I did, I think I mentioned it perhaps in another video, is I added a, a custom, uh, that's another cart path. Uh, maybe I just don't have it in this particular file. Uh, there's a custom that goes all the way around. You can see there's a pretty big road that goes around. So I added that. I'll show that probably in the next one that comes up here. Uh, so you see, yeah, now I added the cart path. So the next stage was, uh, so this was step two. Step three, yes, now I show it. This is where I show it. So there's this uh, custom I did around the outside. So that's that big road that goes around. Um, it does actually go outside my train. It did not throw an error. So uh, that was good. Um, you can see I splined these two water bodies. They caused problems because they were so big. So I did a custom for those at this time. Um, and then I sent all this through and made sure everything meshed correctly. And then lastly, I did all the fill. All right, so that's what this looks like now. So you can see there's no fill. Oh, and then I there actually, I did the uh, the rough fill at this stage as well. So let me show you some of these. I call this hole 99 here. So here's a bunch of different shapes that I put in here to fill in the gaps on the course itself. So this course is mainly rough. I didn't do a lot of deep rough. So let me uh, zoom in here a little bit so you guys can get an idea. I'll turn some of these um on and off so you guys can see how big they are so there's an area right there that i filled in so i'll just turn these on and off so you guys get an idea of like what i did most of these a lot of these i use the cart paths as kind of like uh perimeters you don't need to do that though because they can overlap fine for instance you see the one i'm blinking off right here I could have taken this shape, and let me just show you here. When I highlight it, you'll see 
So here's that shape and I have it, I have it circling the cart path. You have to be very tedious if you do that. There's no reason I could have couldn't have just run it out here and then just did avoided cutting through shapes when I made that. Okay. That's actually usually a safer thing to do. I'm just a little bit OCD when it comes to I don't know why putting these in. Um let me show you some other ones. I'll leave that one off. So there's one right here. Leave that one off. Some other ones here. I like to put them in so you can see I call this one whole 99. Um, but the bottom line is I'll turn these back on. I like putting them here because then I can just come back here and I can turn them all off. Right? Or I could highlight them on here and then delete them if I want to to send them back through Clender as a test. Um, just make sure you don't you, you're careful about how you save things. Okay. But but get the idea. Um and then lastly, I added, I think, yeah, so there's these areas all the way in the outside that I added in too. Now, these are ended up on individual holes. So I put this uh, deep rough area off of hole 10, which is uh, this hole on the north side. Uh, this area right here, uh, that's off of hole 18. This is probably off of hole 18. Oh, no, that's my lake. I didn't highlight the right thing here. Yep, so there's another one off of hole 18 right here. So that was just filling in the gaps. I probably didn't need to create these. I could have let my auto outer kind of fill those in. Um, but one tip is if you're, auto, if you're getting errors on your auto outer shapes that end up filling in this stuff, um, you could always manually draw something in and sometimes that resolves them, all right? So long video, guys. So go ahead and start splining the rest of your course and get a successful OPCD mesh that you can open up in Blender. All right.